Do you a wild star man, Chris? Do you uh, read much in the twenty two hundred games or one hundred or three hundred or whatever it might be? Oh, I think it's a. It's certainly not lost to me that it's a. It's a lot of football. Um, you know, when I when I first started playing football at uh, at West Coast, I remember you, you know you do look on the lockers and there weren't many players that got past two hundred. You know, sort of Maney just crept past two hundred. I think Wusha was two hundred and eight or, or something like that. And uh, you know, there's a heap of great players who um you know only play sort of one fifty games. Even I was talking to Kenny Hunter on Saturday night at a, at a function. I think he, he only played. Well, not only played 150 games and, and was lucky enough to get three flags. So yeah, look, really proud to have uh, have gotten this far. But you know, I think all those things, um, be they milestones or personal achievements, are probably things that you, you sit back and reflect a lot more when your career's done and dusted. Does it feel like a lot of footy? Yeah, it does actually. It um, yeah, it, it it does feel like a lot of footy. So hopefully, there's there's a bit more left and. You know, I certainly feel very excited to be playing at the minute because you know we think the club's got a pretty good good story to tell. Was there ever a time when you were really struggling with the groins a few years ago that you thought this might sort of end a little bit quicker than I initially hoped? Um, yeah, I'll, yeah, there were certainly times that I was concerned about how um, how it was going to all pan out. But I think you know if you you don't play AFL football, it's hard to understand the level of anxiety that all players would feel over. It over their body at various stages in their career. Um, so that was certainly a, a challenging time for me, but, but all players really have have moments throughout the year where they wonder if the year's over or you know if they're going to get up for next week, and, and that's really one of the things you have to deal with as an AFL player. That's no, a, a team game, but just your list of personal achievements are, are fantastic. Has it sort of gone beyond what you ever expected, what you've been able to achieve so far? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I still remember starting off AFL football and, and wondering if I'd ever play a single senior game and, and just that, that being a a really um, strong focus was to, to play a senior game. So, yeah, look, I've been very lucky to, um, you know, to play in some really good teams and uh, and to, to achieve some success and, and hopefully, as I said, we've got, um, you know, one last roll of the dice at, it, at this footy club. What's the best bit of advice you've ever been given before? Um, not so much advice, but I, th I think the, the probably the best lesson I've learnt was from um, was from Ben Cousins, and, j and just based around uh, taking real ownership over over your training, not just having an attitude of coming to the club, getting told what to do, and, and going away and doing it, but taking some real control over what you want to work on and um, how you want to prepare for the game. Because you know, when you are out there on the ground, you want to be 100% confident that you're you've done what you need to and you, you haven't just followed the instructions that, you know, what, what someone else thinks you need to, to do to get ready. Are you still doing extra work outside the club, Chris, from a training perspective? Obviously, in the younger days, you might have just quite structured these days from a club perspective. Yeah, I still do some stuff outside of the club, but it, it's certainly changed from what I did in my younger days. Um, you know, the formula was really simple when I started playing football. You just did, did the programming and you just did a, a stack of extra work on the top and, and those were the blokes that improved and, and played good footy but the program's so intense now that it, it's more about um, being a bit smarter with the extra work you do and, and you certainly can't just go out and do extra running sessions and, and things like that on top of the training you're already doing. You have to be a bit more selective about what, what those extra sessions are but, but certainly I, I still do some extra stuff out, outside the club and um, you know in my own mind I pretty much treat every every session as an optional session you know I'm doing that session because there's something in it that's useful and it's going to benefit me but if there's something that I really can't see helping helping me perform um, then I'll talk to the fitness guys about it and, and see if I can do something that's going to be a better use of my time. Yeah, this might be the last thing you think about or you never thought about but you have a preconceived idea of how long you want to play for? I mean, you guys like Jonathan Brown say he wants to play for this X amount of years old. I mean, do you have any idea of how much is left or how, how long you want to go for? Just really thinking about next week, and it's, it's one of those, those silly cliches that gets used a lot, but the reason it does is because it's, it's pretty accurate of what life's like when you're in a, in a footy season. There's so many unpredictables that can happen between now and Saturday night, let alone now and three years' time, that it's, it's probably naive to try and... You know, I think it's a bit naive for me to say how long I want to play for. It's a bit like, you know, your mind can't tell your body how you're feeling. You've you really just got to listen to your body and probably listen to the other cues along the way of how the club's going, 
what your personal circumstances are like as to as to how long you play for. Yeah. Do you feel as good physically for say in the last hundred as you did the first hundred? No, nah. <laughs> but I, I, I feel good and uh, no complaints. But uh, yeah, I'd be lying if I said I'm uh, as sprightly as I was when I had long hair and was living over in the Wild West. Just on this week, what, does it bring you next set of I don't know, pressures or next set of sort of questions playing club for the first time and through first AFL game? Well, someone threw a stat at us that uh, five out of six new teams in the competition have won their first games. Does anyone know if that's true? Yeah, that's true. true. So, you know, there's no doubt there'll be a heap of emotion um, from Gold Coast, um, you know, and felt by their players. And add, add to that the fact that they've got some, some really good players, both, you know, senior players and, and some of the best kids in the country. So, um, you know, it's, it's a big challenge for us, but, you know, Richmond, very good young side, and that was a big challenge too. There's, there's not many weeks in, in AFL footy where you just trot out and uh, and take the points. So, um, you know, history history suggests Gold Coast will come out and play well, and, and we hope they play well, and we hope that we're good enough to beat a, a team that's, that's up and going. Does that make the start of the game even more important? All the emotion that's going to be around that first game, are they going to roll sort of early? It's hard to stop. Maybe, yeah, but I, th I think the start of games is, is just super important regardless, e even more so nowadays than it has been in the past, and, and this week would be no different. How do you go about strategising against such a new team with not much uh, background on them? Do you have a really close look at their NAB Cup performances? Is there stuff you can do? Yeah, we'll be looking at the NAB Cup performances, and obviously there's, there's a lot of, of players in that team who we actually know really well how they play, um, so it's not like the whole team we're, we're seeing for the first time. And then, and then like most games, the majority of stuff we're talking about and thinking about leading into the game is what we want to do. And, uh, and that won't change. But I think we've got a bit of a feel for, for the style of play. They, they generally like to kick the ball pretty long and like to force you to kick the ball pretty long. And uh, you know, rather than a forward press, they have a bit more of a, of a retreat and push numbers right back. So I think we've, we um, have a bit of a feel for how they play, but certainly the, the team's Playing them later on in the year, we'll, we'll have a, a better feel as well. What did you uh, sort of take out of your first year? What, what sort of things were you happy that you were able to implement after a, a summer of working on that? Um, I thought our defensive setups were, were pretty good. We, um, you know, particularly in that first half, half the percentage of time that the ball was in our forward half was was very high, and that's something that we've worked on, and that's something that we feel is a, a really important stat. Um, you know, I think some of our ball, ball movement was um, was pretty good as well. Some of the, the forwards running patterns we were happy with and, and was, um, you know, was built on, on some hard work we've done over summer. And, and then the evenness of the team, I think the team's stiffening up a bit. And, uh, you know, when you, you watch the team play now, that looks like a, a more mature outfit, which, which I think is going to be good for us as well. Anyone had a word to Jared Mike this week? Got suspended a couple of times last year. Might have been a bit lucky to get one away with one on the weekends. Anyone had a chat to him about it? We've spoken, yeah, we've, we've spoken to Jared a lot about um, you know what we expect from him and, and just how important he is for the group. Um, and he, he understands that. And uh, yeah, I won't say he was lucky, but you know we're obviously wrapped. He's, he's playing this week, and, and we really. We really feel that Jared um, needs to be an important leader for our group too. You know, he's, he's our most experienced player in the forward line, and um, yeah, I think he, he fully understands what's expected of him. And how was the opponent, Chris? Over Probably Adam Goods. We had some, had some really good battles over the years. Um, yeah, because I'm a, a reasonable sized midfielder, um, so usually when I, I line up on my opponents, um, I'm either a little bit taller than them and bigger than them, or if, if they're bigger than me, then I'll, I'll feel that I'm quicker than them. But, uh, you know, when Adam sort of struts out to you, look at him and he's sort of 196 and he's lightning quick and you sort of start doing the, the maths and it, it doesn't add up so well. So uh, I don't know what I went to then. I think it was my mental focus that was going to give me the edge over him. But um, he's a great player and, and we had some really good battles over the years. Chris, just on uh, Murphy, yeah, is, there, is he any closer to staying with the club and are you increasingly worried that he might go elsewhere at the end of the year or the end of the year? No, I, I'm not, um, you know, obviously not involved with his, his contract negotiations as I'm not with, um, with any other players. And, you know, we think, as I said, we've, we've got an a exciting story to tell here and, and Murph's an integral part of it. We love playing with him and, and um, you know, he's really happy to be here. So that, that's not a concern of the playing group at this stage. Uh, 
A good one, hopefully. But um, yeah, look. Yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be in the trenches. So um, look, I reckon it's I reckon it's really exciting. It's um, I can't wait. Bex uh, Bex doing really well, and it's going to be an exciting year.